Hello everybody, Germ here, and I am Mentally Diseased. Today I'm going to be responding to a Jehovah's Witness video. It's a little bit of an older one uh, from a series of videos called Applying Bible Principles. The title of this video is Making a Success of Your Singleness. Let's take a look. Life is kind of lonely right now. All of my friends got married and seem so happy. What if I never find someone? Okay, I'd wager this woman's around probably late 20s, early 30s. Panic about not finding love hits just about anybody at that age. In a religious group like this though, it probably feels like an eternity. Witnesses tend to get married right out of the gate. They don't waste any time. This isn't really a doctrine thing, it's more of the culture there, but it comes as a result of all the other rules. You're only allowed to marry other witnesses. You're encouraged to marry within the congregation. You can't masturbate at all, <laughs> and you can't have sex, so... If you're marrying within the congregation and there's only five other people there your age, you're gonna get friggin' married to one of them before you're faced with sexual frustration the rest of your life. It looks like this girl probably made the mistake of trying to be rational and not find herself married to somebody she hates. And now she's ended up in a situation where all of her marriage prospects are gone. Maybe there's a couple eligible people in the congregation that she's not really that interested in. In that kind of environment, if you wait too long, you're gonna end up with the scraps. And here she is. Now everybody's married and uh, they're probably turning out kids like nobody's business while she's sitting there depressed. It's a pretty common complaint, especially for women as witnesses, but it happens to both. Hmm. Taylor invited me for a gathering. That's nice. Actually, I don't feel comfortable at gatherings. All those people. Maybe another time. This is shady. What they're trying to do here, like they do with any other problem a woman faces, is try to make it out like it's her fault. She doesn't have a husband because she's shy. If she didn't avoid so many gatherings, she would have one by now. Or, maybe, if there weren't 500 rules about everything, she wouldn't have to go to some witness dress up potluck to find a damn husband. I just love my job. No, you don't. Girl, if your religion sucks that bad that you look forward to working at a call center every day, you need to reevaluate. Mark has given me lots of attention lately. He really appreciates me. And actually, he's kind of cute. But he's not a brother. I really want to be obedient to Jehovah. But it's hard. This is not hyperbole. In fact, they're probably downplaying her thought process a little bit here. Like I've already said, she's not allowed to be friends with anyone that's not a witness. Your interactions with outsiders is supposed to be limited to just professional talk unless it's with the intent to convert, let alone having a giggly flirtatious exchange like this. She's probably about to really rack herself with some unwarranted guilt. Marry only in the Lord. That sounds nice. I just don't know any brother I really connect with. Taylor met her husband on the internet. They seem to be very happy. So what's the harm in finding a brother that way? Would it really be bad to have a quick look at one of those JW dating sites? Now I'll give them this, a third party JW dating site sounds like a hot mess, but meeting people online or through apps is just the way that it's done now. It's not nearly the terrifying thing they keep trying to make it out to be. And if they're really interested in helping people with this, like they're making a whole short film about it right now, 
why don't they do something to actually help? They have a whole broadcasting studio, a streaming service. They've got a giant online library and all of these resources there. Why don't they have an officially backed way for their members to connect? be it for friendship or otherwise. Now, I'm not saying they need to start a dating website, but how hard would it be for them to set up an official forum? Something to help them alleviate the isolation a lot of them feel. I'm just saying, it wouldn't be that hard. Oh, it's Julia. How thoughtful of her to invite me for family worship. Should I join them? Oh well, why not? This is the beginning of one of those, and then someone knocked on the door stories. Everyone has some ridiculous story about how they were feeling down about something or were doing something wrong and then a miracle from Jehovah happened and set them on the right path. It's usually a story about how they first came to be introduced to the witnesses, like say a relative or something died and when they were feeling their worst, the witnesses showed up at their door and that's how they know it's the truth. My dad had a really stupid story like this about quitting smoking. Oh. The other thing they're doing here that I want to point out is implying that all of her problems are about to get fixed because she stopped being shy and finally agreed to go to a gathering. No. It's okay to be shy. It's fine to not want to go to parties. It's even okay to be single. What's wrong is to let yourself feel guilty because somebody at work gave you a compliment. What's wrong is to deny yourself love because of a difference in opinion over what some old book says. Julia used to be in the same position as I'm in. She understands me. I love the story of Jephthah's daughter. You loved the story of Jephthah's daughter. And after implying over and over again that this girl is single because she's shy, they're now going to use the parable of a girl who never knew love because of a mistake her father made. Alrighty then. Because her father made a promise to Jehovah, she served at Jehovah's tabernacle for the rest of her life. She was single too, and sad for a little while, but she learned to be content and found joy in her service to Jehovah. Every year her friends visited her and were a real encouragement. And so are mine. That family study really had an impact on me. They're uh, assuming an awful lot about this vague 40 verse Bible story. Forgive me, I'm about to go on a rant here, but I think it's important to really look at this because they're asking women to make major life decisions based on this parable. The story of Jephthah is a goldmine for people like me because the plausibility of biblical literalism completely unravels here. If you're unfamiliar with the story of Jephthah, allow me to give you two versions. In both versions, the Israelites start out having just been delivered from Egypt, and those cheeky kids forsake God and turn to false idols again and again and again and again. Jehovah simply stopped granting them his protection because they turned away from him. This led to the Israelites being enslaved by the Philistines and the Ammonites. Jephthah and his family faced a lot of hardship, but they remained faithful to Jehovah and were determined to gain his approval. Jephthah was driven away by his jealous half-brothers, but he kept a good attitude when they came crawling back to him to ask for his help in defeating the Ammonites. He valiantly answered the call and agreed to help free Israel, but he knew he would need Jehovah's help, so he offered to sacrifice the first thing that walked out of his home after he returned from battle. Jehovah agrees, they smash the Ammonites, and when he returns home, who's the first to walk out but his only daughter? <gasps> I mean really, what was he thinking? Who else would come out of your house to greet you? but your family. Jephthah's daughter must then forgo such joys as getting married and having children, and she spends the rest of her days as a virgin serving Jehovah up at the tabernacle. Now let's talk about what the Bible actually says. To start off with, they 
way softened up how the Israelites even got into this mess. They like to act like they just fell into the hands of the Ammonites because they lost Jehovah's protection. Judges chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 shows the reality of the situation. God got pissed off and sold them into the hands of their enemies and actively fought against them. This wasn't some situation where he was just chilling back with his arms crossed waiting for them to get it together. He was an antagonist. Judges chapter 11 is where all the Jephthah stuff goes down. He agrees to lead and he'll get God's help doing it too, but only if they agree to make him the leader of Gilead in return. Watchtower conveniently leaves this part out because, well, some guy praying for help to win a war so that he can become the boss of a bunch of people that cast him out would kind of lend sympathy toward people who are being shunned, don't you think? It would debunk everything they say about God not answering selfish prayers, and it would completely crush this narrative that they're trying to build here of Jephthah being the super spiritual guy who's just doing this because he loves God a whole bunch. He then makes a vow to sacrifice whatever walks out of his house first as a burnt offering. At this point in the article, Watchtower at least acknowledges that the term burnt offering was used. They even agree that human sacrifice sacrifice is something God views as detestable, quoting a scripture in Deuteronomy to support that. They say that Jephthah evidently meant that he would devote the person to the exclusive service of God. The word evidently suggests the presence of actual evidence, but they offer no scriptural evidence to support this. None. So she comes out, he acts all surprised that the first person to come out of his house is someone that lives there, tears up his clothes, all of that. She's surprisingly nonchalant about all of this and says, well, you gotta keep your promises, but first, let me run off to the mountains with my girlfriends for a couple months so I can wail about my virginity. Please. She went up there and threw the most epic bachelorette party you've ever seen. We're really supposed to believe that a girl that's about to get sacrificed is going to run up to the mountains with her girlfriends to cry about her virginity and not make the whole point of the trip to lose her virginity? I don't buy it. The story concludes with her returning home and Jephthah did to her as he had vowed. He burned her up. Beyond just being unsettling, this story is deeply problematic for religions that try to pass the Bible off as literal history. As the Watchtower article already pointed out, God made a point to announce that he doesn't like human sacrifice. The tale of Abraham and Isaac completely contradicts this story. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son in order to test his faith and send an angel down at the last minute to stop him from doing it, no such angel showed up in this story. It's so troubling, in fact, that Christians have been trying to find a way to twist the ending of the story to mean something different since the 12th century. The problem here is that if Bible accounts are meant to be taken literally, then the story of Jephthah's daughter makes God out to be a liar. He either lied about not accepting human sacrifice or the story of Jephthah and his daughter is a lie in a book that's said to be the actual word of God. There's a really great video that breaks down all of this over here by the Bible skeptic. If you're interested in this and find yourself with an hour of free time, I really recommend you check it out. All of the texts conclude with it becoming a tradition for Israelites to go visit the mountains where Jephthah's daughter went for four days out of a year. But most translations use the word to commemorate or lament the daughter. Jehovah's Witnesses New World Translation conveniently renders the word as to commend his daughter. This doesn't change what was already said about him doing to her as he had vowed, but it works nicely when they quote the scripture out of context to manipulate women into doing something they probably shouldn't do. Everything the woman in this video said about Jephthah's daughter that encouraged her is a complete fabrication. There's nothing in the Bible mentioning a tabernacle that she went to. There's no narrative there to suggest that she started out sad but ended up feeling really fulfilled for living out her days for God. It's not a story of empowerment. It's a tragic cautionary tale about making flippant vows you're not prepared to keep. In the broader context of the full book of Judges, it's but one of many tales illustrating how horrible the Israelites were at governing themselves and how much they needed to establish a monarchy. Nothing in the book of Judges is something that a modern day Christian should be basing hard life decisions on. It's a book of failures. Whew. Rant over, back to the video. If Jephthah's daughter could do that, so can I. Jehovah promises that. Jehovah will not hold back anything good from those walking in integrity. Girl, what you doing in Psalms? How did you get here? What happened to Jephthah?
I cannot believe it even crossed my mind to date a non-witness or even look at those JW dating sites and put my integrity at stake. Imagine what I could have gotten myself into. A relationship. You could have gotten yourself into a relationship. I'm so happy Julia invited me. Jehovah will definitely be there for me to turn my singleness into a success. It's been a while now since I've started pioneering. That decision strengthened my relationship with Jehovah. I feel much closer to the congregation. I finally understand what Jesus meant at Matthew 19 verse 12. He said, let the one who can make room for it, make room for it. My singleness indeed allows me to serve Jehovah without distraction. I just love my life. An invitation to the School for Kingdom Evangelizers. Yes. Jehovah really did not hold back anything good from me. The School for Kingdom Evangelizers is their recent replacement for Ministerial Training School. It's a training program you undertake before being sent out to Pioneer where the need is great. It's targeted primarily for single people or couples with no children. You sign a vow of poverty and obedience and then you're basically at Watchtower's mercy until you get old, develop health problems, and they wash their hands clean of you. Once again, their solution for all of life's problems is to go out in field service more. And they're asking young women to sign away their lives based on the encouraging example of Jephthah's daughter, a story about a girl who ended up being so successful she never even got a name in a parable they don't even understand. Thousands of young Christian men and women are willing to sacrifice getting married or are choosing not to have children, at least for now. Why? Because they want to concentrate on serving Jehovah more. Also, many of our older ones sacrifice spending time with their children or grandchildren. Instead, they give their time and energy to Jehovah. Some of them work on construction projects or attend the School for Kingdom Evangelizers and move on to a congregation that has a greater need for publishers. Others make plans to increase their service to Jehovah during the memorial season. He will never forget the loving sacrifices of all these faithful ones. What about you? Would you be able to make sacrifices to serve Jehovah more fully? That really says it all as to their intentions with this video. It wasn't to encourage or empower people struggling to find love. They don't care if you find love or not. This video was pure propaganda for getting people to sign their lives away to Watchtower. Ladies, men, anyone struggling with finding love, I implore you, don't let an organization that has only their needs in mind steer you so hard on a matter as personal as love. It's fine to be single. It's okay to avoid going to parties. If your natural inclination is to try a dating site to find somebody, do it. You're not helpless. Use common sense, use your brain, but you'll be fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And just because you haven't found somebody by the time you're 30 doesn't mean you're never going to find anyone ever. You still have the whole rest of your life ahead of you unless you do what they're saying here and sign your life away to go preaching door to door for the rest of your life. This video is literally the worst advice you could possibly get if you're struggling with being single. This ain't it, chief. No. So witnesses have a whole series of videos like these applying Bible principles where they cherry pick a Bible story or a scripture and blanket it over real life issues. I'm thinking about covering more of things like this. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of things like this or if you think that's dumb or you have something else to say altogether. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.